What is a tourism sector? It is an economic sector where users spend their time by recreational activities mostly but not necessarily in remote locations. It is a sector where people spend their time on leisure activities mainly and sometimes it is done away from their home. Transportation. It is an important component of the tourism industry for it facilitates a tourist opportunity to reach his or her greatest desire. It is essential for their following trips from generating destination to the host destination, return between destinations, and within destinations. There are three modes of transportation. It consists of land, air, and water. Land transportation. Land transport covers all land-based transportation system that provides for the movement of people, goods, and services. Transport over land can refer to the movement of people animals or goods from one place to another. Road transportation. Road transportation attracts tourists because of the following reasons. One, control of the route and stops and route. Second, control of departure times. Third, ability to carry baggage and equipment easily. Fourth, possible use for accommodation. Five, privacy. Sixth, freedom to use the automobile in and around the destination is rich. Seven, low, low perceived out-of-pocket expenses. Types of land transportation. Horse carriage or kalesa. This mode of transportation has been used in the country for several centuries already. Kalesas today are still built similarly as it was before with the two-wheel carriage wrapped into the horse usually enough to you carry around 3 to 5 persons. Additionally, kalesas today are no long, longer primarily used for transportation in the Philippines. Kalesas are still serving some cultural heritage sites or historical streets in some parts of the country. Bicycle with cabins or pedicabs is the mode of transportation that involves a cabin. Another example is the pedicab. Although it is not run by a motor, pedicab are still serving some streets in the country of one wishes to go to near destination. Jeepneys and modernized jeepneys. These jeepneys are known to cater to more passengers in an air conditioned vehicle that also travel the same route that one other jeepneys do. However, mod modernized jeepneys have a small price difference with it having slightly higher base fare as compared to regular jeepneys. Nevertheless, out of all the public modes of transportation in the country, jeepneys may they be modernized or not, remains to be the cheapest option there is. Rail transportation Rail transportation in the Philippines is currently used mostly to transport passengers within the Metro Manila and provinces of Laguna and Quezon as well as a commun commuter service in the Bicol region. Transport services once operated, operated in the country, but these services were halted. However, there are plans to restore old services and build new ones. Kinds of Rail Transportation MRT, the Metro Rail Transit is the second rapid transit system serving Metro Manila and the Philippines. It originally began as a single line that was first opened in 1999 and became fully operational by the year 2000. The MRT branding is currently associated with rapid transit lines in Metro Manila. LRT includes lines 7 and 9 although the three lines will have different operators. LRT The Manila Light 
rail transit system is one of the two rapid transit systems serving the Metro Manila area of the Philippines. There are two lines to the system, Line 1 and Line 2. The system is under the jurisdiction of the Light Rail and Transit Authority, although the Light Rail Manila Corporation is responsible for the operations and maintenance of Line 1. Although the system is referred to as a light rail system because the network is mostly elevated, the system is more to a rapid transit metro system. In European North American terms, the Manila LRT system is the first metro system in Southeast Asia earlier than the Singapore MRT by three years. Airline industry Air transport has contributed greatly to the growth and development of the tourism industry worldwide. Its rapid and continuous technological development has made traveling more economical, faster, safer, and more comfortable. Air travel has changed the way people view time and distance. The air industry has grown from infant to a giant. World's airline has over 1 to 6 billion passengers per year. The major advantage of air travelism is speed. There are two examples of forming bodies and they are IATA, which means International Air Transport Association, ICAO, and we call it the International Civilization Organization. What is water transportation? Water transportation is one of the most oldest transportation in our human history and an important part of tourism and travel, especially in economy. It refers to the transportation of people or cargo via waterways and also known as the maritime transport, fluvial transport, or waterborne transport. The term water transport can also refer to the deliberate movement of water over long distances. Water transport, on the other hand, refers to the movement of passenger and goods by water in the context of travel and tourism. It is one of the most oldest modes of transportation and has been used extensively throughout history. While popularity and ease of aviation have caused water transport to fall out of favor, it is still used. What is water transport used for? Different modes of transportation serve distinct functions. However, as previously stated, transportation is used to move goods and people. Transporting passenger or cargo from point A to point B is critical. Whether it is for someone to get back to work or for groceries to be transported from farm to storefront. Why water transportation is important to tourism industry? They are used to transport cargo from one country to another. It is frequently much cheaper to transport heavy goods by water than air or road. What is the importance of water transportation? Water transportation has massive carrying capacity while using far less energy than other modes of transportation such as truck rail or air shippers prefer barge transportation because the energy saving result is an insignificant cost savings water transportation is an important part of tourism and travel it refers to the transportation of people or cargo via waterways over long distances types of water transportation water transport for military use the military also operate at sea whether it's Philippine Coast Guard or Philippine Navy. Water transport is used, there are so many jobs on board, from engineers to stroke divers. The role of naval force is to train and organize in order to win any conflict or wars that do arise, and to maintain security and deterrence through sustained presence. Water transport usage for cargo. 
Bulk carriers and container ships are two importance of water transport that transport cargo from one country to another. It is frequently much less expensive to transport heavy goods by water than by air or road. When found in large quantities, cargo such as rice and grain transported via bulk carriers is obviously heavy. The majority of world's dry cargo is transported by container ships in truck-sized containers for ease of unloading. Water transport usage in passenger. Passenger use transport for recreation and commuting. Ferries can be used that travel between different areas with relative ease. Traveling by ferry is much often much less expensive than flying. And some of cases, you can bring your own car with you. Another type of water transport is cruise ship. They are purely recreational whereas cruise ship used for provide uh, means of travel from one country to another in order to relocate or take a vacation once there. Cruises now serve as a vacation in and of themselves. They are larger than ferries and typically offer one to two week trips where passengers visit multiple locations while also enjoying onboard entertainment. As in this video shows, water transport is, is an important part of tourism industry whereas it is small passenger ferry or large cruise ship, it is transportation to the economy whether it is used to transport goods or not. Now, we're going to talk about accommodation in tourism. So, lodging. Lodging is a place to stay temporarily. It is important to the tourism industry because the accommodation provides facility where tourists can stay. So, yun yung mga places saan tayo nag-stay temporarily. Like yung mga hotel, if like malayo tayo sa bahay, kailangan natin ng pagtutulugan in there are times that we travel and stay away from home. The places we take rest from temporarily are what we call lodging. According to Mancini, it is the structure that provides sleeping accommodation to travelers and that usually features dining facilities and daily housekeeping service. According to Wildener is defined as facilities for the lodgings of visitors to a destination. Most common forms are hotels, motels, campgrounds, bed and breakfast, terminatories, hotels, and the homes of friends and relatives. The following are the different types of accommodation establishment as defined by the Department of Tourism DOT. Hotels. A hotel is a type of accommodation that provides shelter, meals, and other services. To tourists and guests, I assume everyone is familiar with hotels because it is almost everywhere. An example of a hotel in the Philippines is Okada, Manila. Resorts. Although a hotel and a resort can be a similar since it both provides Tourists, a place to stay. Resorts ought to bring more relaxing experience since it is often a place to unwind and have vacations. Resorts offer special attraction, attractions such as beaches and sessuaries, scenic or historic areas, ski parks or spas. Apartment hotels as are similar to hotels but provides a places to stay and uses a hotel style booking system it is a similar renting an apartment where you can stay in a long term basis but with no fixed contracts the occupants can check out whenever they wish pension house a private or a family operated tourist boarding house tourist guest house or tourist lodging house employing non-professional domestic helpers regularly catering to tourists and travelers containing several independent letable rooms providing a common facilities su such 
as toilets, bathrooms, showers, living and dining rooms, and or kitchen, and where accommodation of boards and lodging may be provided. Motorist Hotel Or as what we call a motel, motels can be cheaper than hotels since it does provide much amenities. Motels are the best option if you do not wish to stay long or care about other amenities. It is originally a hotel designed for a person's traveling by automobile with convenient parking space provided. Food and beverage. Food and beverage is also referred to as catering. Food and beverage can be divided into many different segments including commercial establishments like restaurants, lodges, banquet and catering services, fast foods, cafeterias, kiosks, clubs, hotels, guest houses, and B&Bs. And institutional food service like schools, hospitals, colleges, and military services. Restaurants, a for-profit food service operation whose primary business involves the sale of food and beverage products to individuals and small groups of guests. Restaurants can be grouped and categorized as quick service, full service restaurants, family restaurants, fine dining, casual dining, and team restaurants. Hope you like our video and learn something new things. We are the group 2. Thank you and goodbye.